Now, when it comes to designing suspension for a new model motorcycle, the manufacturer has some problems to overcome and some compromises to make. First of all, the manufacturer has no idea who's going to buy this motorcycle and people come in all shapes and sizes. A prospective customer could weigh 8 stone or 20 stone and the suspension's got to be designed to cope with both ends of that spectrum and everywhere in between. Now there's no way of designing a spring shock absorber that can deal with that full range of weights adequately. So the manufacturer has to compromise. He has to choose a certain weight range that he considers to fit your average customer. Now the problem is, as a T120 owner, if you fall on either side of that band, you've got a problem with your suspension. Add to that the fact that every customer has very different requirements from a suspension setup. The manufacturer is pretty much on a loser before he even puts pen to paper on the drawing board. And then there's cost, because when it comes down to it, the manufacturer probably only has between 10 and 15 pounds per shock absorber to spend on every model that goes out. Now by and large, if you fit within what Triumph has earmarked as an average weight, you're going to find a compromise with the suspension that is going to sort of suit you. But with a setup like that, you're never going to get it perfect. Now, Legend has its suspension on the old Triumph Bonneville and Triumph T100, the pre-2016 models, were designed by Satan and built by all his little demons in the fiery pits of hell. And the common advice given was that the first thing you had to do was rip the suspension off and replace it with something better. Now, the T120 at first glance doesn't seem that bad, and I certainly thought it was pretty okay when I first got the bike. But as you get used to the bike, and you ride it under different conditions and different road surfaces, and you ride it in a different manner, the suspension setup's shortcomings start to show through. And this is exactly what Triumph expects to happen because they offer the £649 Fox suspension option. Now £649 is an awful lot of money, although they do look very nice. But whenever I think of Fox shock absorbers, I always think of shock absorbers for mountain bikes. So I didn't really want to go there and you are still buying a one-size-fits-all option. So for all its high price tag and glitzy appeal, you're just stepping out of one compromise straight into a more expensive compromise. Now looking around, there are suspension setups of all different qualities and price ranges, but one stuck out in my mind far above the rest of them, and that's the shocks made by Hagen. Now Hagen were started up in the 1950s by the world famous motorcycle racer Alf Hagen and they make a huge range of shock absorbers for just about every model of motorcycle past and present but unlike the rest of the world in shock absorbers where one size fits all Hagen has a slightly different approach and that is that each pair of Hagen shock absorbers sold is custom made specifically to suit the weight of the prospective customer. Now, I didn't want a piggyback shock absorber. I wanted something with a classic traditional profile. So I chose these Hagen Nitros. This is the silver spring, silver body version with black accents. Now these are aimed specifically at the custom performance market. They're not a utility shock. It offers full progressive preload control and also 10 position damping control. Now you're not going to save any weight with these shocks, they weigh about the same as the OEM models, but they are extremely high quality. Now both the spring and the damper unit itself are made from stainless steel, so corrosion long term isn't going to be a problem with these springs. Now it has fully progressive preload adjustment via this threaded collar at the top. It comes complete with a 2.5mm Allen key just to unlock the grub screw to stop the adjuster from being inadvertently altered and your traditional C-spanner to actually incrementally increase or decrease the preload on your spring. Also at the bottom 
it has a little nailed wheel which gives you 10 different positions to alter your damping. It's fully rebuildable and it comes with a two year guarantee. Now this spring is aimed at the performance custom market and for the vision that I've got for this bike in the future it fitted exactly what I wanted. If you're after a more traditional look the 2810 which is a little bit cheaper gives you that more traditional 1950s 1960s look but with similar adjustment capabilities now as i've said this is a suspension unit that is designed to last and it exudes quality and the best part about it is the price is only 379 pounds now yeah i know 379 pounds is still a lot of money but if you compare this with the fox it's almost half the price. So when you look at what you're actually getting here, that £379 is pretty good value for money. And of course, being Hagen, they are British made. Now a word of advice here when it comes to ordering, don't order from the website. There are over a hundred models in this range to choose from and it's confusing. Ring Hagen up, tell them the model of your bike. They'll ask you a few questions about your weight, whether you're gonna be carrying pillions, that kind of thing. That way you will make sure that you get a set of shocks that are custom built to your requirements and your weight. Now I've put almost 500 miles on these shocks, my recent trip to the Yorkshire Dills included. The shocks came pre-adjusted and I found I just had to up the preload a little bit for the amount of luggage that I was taking on the trip. And during all those miles of travel I can confirm that the bump stop indicator shows that I am using all of my spring travel without it ever bottoming out. As I've said, these are a performance shock. So the first thing that you will notice, even on minimal preload, is that the ride quality is substantially firmer than you got with the OEM shock absorbers. Now on your urban cycle, 30 mile an hour commute to work, etc., on pothole roads, that firmness means that your ride is going to be a little bumpier than you used to with the OEM shocks but not in a bad way. The shock absorbers do soak up those bumps very well. It doesn't bottom out. There's none of that banging and crashing that you tend to get with the OEM items. The sorcery, however, comes in once you get above 40 miles an hour. These shocks do an excellent job of keeping that back tire in contact with the road. The rad becomes much plusher and smoother than with the original shocks. The ride quality feels much more sophisticated, whereas with the old shock you felt them working hard underneath you, especially at high speed. These shocks just seem to take everything in the stride without any drama. The road holding is much improved, and even with weight on the back there's none of that wallowing and weaving that you sometimes encounter with the original shocks. The bike feels safer and more planted, but what it does highlight is the inadequacies of the front fork suspension. I have got some replacements from Hagen, but I didn't want to fit them until I'd fully digested what difference these rear shocks had made. For me, these shocks strike a balance between price, quality and performance, which is hard to beat with any other product that I've looked at. Now, if you're happy with your original shocks, fair enough. But if you're not and you want to improve your handling and you're looking for a genuine high quality performance upgrade that isn't going to break the bank, these shocks are well worth looking at. Now the upgrade for the front forks, I will be fitting those and doing a review at some time in the coming weeks. I'm not quite sure when that's going to be. Once again, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you've found it useful. I have a few things in the pipeline and I'm not quite sure what I'm going to be presenting next week, but there will be a video next week as always. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.